This video gives a very brief overview of PV inverters and discusses the three main types of PV inverters, namely the um, string inverters, central inverters, and the emerging micro inverters. The inverter is the intelligent component of a PV power system, and therefore the, uh, the performance and the characteristics of the entire PV power system is determined completely by the design of the inverter. The, uh, the steady state and transient characteristics of the PV power system depends on how the controllers inside the inverter have been designed. And these characteristics can be very different from those of uh, conventional power plant generators. Uh, for example, in terms of the fault current characteristics, the response uh, during system contingencies and so on. Uh, both uh, in positive ways and in negative ways. Uh, for example, the uh, uh, the inverters, they employ uh, fairly high switching frequencies and they have uh, 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 large control bandwidths. So they can respond very quickly during system uh, contingencies and be able to provide active and reactive power support, which is a positive thing. Um, in terms of reliability, the entire PV power system reliability is dominated by the reliability of the inverter and its components. Because the PV modules themselves are uh, highly reliable, they have 25-30 uh, years uh, uh, lifetime. Uh, so a poor design of the inverter can bring down the reliability of the entire system. Then in terms of the performance, the inverters can uh, also affect the energy yield of the overall uh, plant by, um, uh, by its power conversion efficiency as well as the maximum power tracking efficiency. The basic functions that any inverter um, needs to perform are listed here. Uh, the primary function, of course, is to convert the DC power from the uh, solar uh, PV modules to AC power suitable for grid injection or to support standalone AC loads. The inverters are also responsible for maximizing the energy harvest by always uh, operating at the maximum power point. Um, inverters need to control the grid current um, presently mostly at unity power factor but increasingly uh, at an arbitrary controllable power factor as well. Um, inverter needs to perform several protection functions. The chief among them is the uh, active anti-alending which is uh, a safety issue and uh, they also perform various uh, monitoring functions uh, to relay the, uh, the power energy production and so on. Uh, the recent trend in the inverters have been to um, to design smart inverters that can provide grid support features both at the uh, transmission level and increasingly in the in the distribution level as well in order to increase the hosting capacity of uh, distribution feeders and finally it is uh, important to remember that uh, the pv inverters are high frequency switching power electronic converters some of the major components of an inverter are shown in this slide. Uh, so essentially these are switch mode power converters. These are the semiconductor switches um, that switch at uh, fairly high frequencies in the, uh, uh, I would say, 5 to 20 kilohertz range to produce uh, these switching waveforms, uh, which have the fun uh, fundamental, 60 hertz fundamental component, which is what we essentially control to meet many of our control objectives. So these switches are made of um, the semiconductor devices uh, as shown here uh, with their um, um, heat removal mechanism. Um, because of the high frequency, we need to filter the high frequency components. And these are the LNC that uh, remove the high frequency components. On the DC link, they have um, a bank of um, large electrolyte, electrolytic capacitors to keep the um, DC voltage smooth. And uh, especially in the case of single phase applications, to support the 120 hertz uh, power pulsations. Many different ways the PV inverters can be classified. Uh, it could be based on uh, whether they are grid connected or supporting standalone AC loads, um, or in terms of the uh, uh, single phase or three phase applications. Um, most uh, uh, residential uh, level applications and the micro inverter applications are single phase. Um, whereas the commercial and uh, obviously the utility scale applications are three-phase. 
then they can be classified based on the transformer isolation. Most PV inverters have a, a transformer isolation in some stage of the inverter. Um, it could be a line frequency, a 60 hertz transformer, mostly in all the uh, utility scale inverters. Uh, or they could have a high frequency transformer, again, mostly in the uh, uh, residential applications. Um, a recent trend in uh, residential rooftop inverters is to go for a transformer-less, non-isolated solution. Um, the standards uh, and the codes are, uh, they, they do support this uh, transformer-less arrangements and they need to operate with uh, ungrounded PV arrays. Um, but the main classification that I wanted to talk about in this video is the um, is based on the application. Um, so we have central inverters, the large utility scale applications, string inverters, which are the rooftop, and micro inverters, which is a, a, a recent concept uh, where the inverter is uh, integrated into the module, uh, into the PV module. The central inverters are used in uh, large uh, utility scale um, PV power plants, uh, which um, um, can be as high as uh, several hundreds of megawatt uh, in, in rating. So these uh, power plants employed uh, typically hundreds of megawatt scale central inverters, um, and they are uh, configured um, uh, as, as shown here. So the PV, are, PV modules are connected in series to form strings, and several of these strings are connected in parallel to form this entire PV array, and they form the input to each of these um, uh, utility scale uh, central inverter. Um, so, uh, so they typically have power ranging from uh, any, anywhere between 250 kilowatt to more than a megawatt uh, uh, recently. And they invariably have a three phase transformer that steps up the um, uh, inverter produced voltage in the range of um, about 400 to 600 volts three phase AC to the um, either the distribution level uh, voltage or to the sub transmission level voltage. Uh, where they are interfaced to. Uh, an example of a large power plant in um, uh, Agua Caliente, Arizona. Uh, it's a 290 megawatt uh, plant. Um, it has um, um, uh, multiple strings of uh, 1.2 megawatt AC each and uh, each string has uh, two inverters. Um, and you can see these inverters in this large uh, PV uh, plant. The central inverters tend to have the highest uh, efficiency among all the inverter types. Uh, recent products um, um, have efficiencies, uh, the peak efficiencies exceeding 98%. Um, they are also uh, the most cost effective solutions for the larger utility scale applications because of the uh, fewer number of inverters needed. Um, uh, some, some of the drawbacks uh, that can be cited against a central inverter design is that uh, it has this uh, MPPT or maximum power tracking uh, common for a large array. So if there is um, um, some partial shading of uh, just a few modules in that array, then we get uh, a, a disproportional loss in the power uh, or energy um, harvested. Uh, similarly, if there is a mismatch between the modules, uh, once again, we have a disproportionate loss in the power. Uh, also, the loss of the single inverter can lead to the loss of um, uh, a very large section of the power plant. The string inverters are used in uh, residential rooftop applications. They are um, uh, typically single phase and in the range of 2 to 6 kilowatt power rating. Uh, the name string inverter comes from the, the fact that these inverters interface uh, a string uh, of uh, several series connected PV modules to the to the grid. Uh, so we can also think of uh, having multiple strings on rooftop, uh, each string um, connected to the grid by uh, an individual uh, string inverter. Therefore, we get um, uh, maximum power tracking for each of the strings separately. Uh, the string inverters obviously provide uh, string level maximum power tracking. So in that sense, they are better than central inverters. Uh, but the, but this is still not optimal as we will see when we discuss uh, micro inverters. Some of the string inverters, um, actually many of the inverters now, uh, they have uh, multiple DC-DC stage. So they can offer uh, um, 
multiple channels, multiple independent MPPT channels. So you, you can, for example, if you have um, um, two strings facing different directions on the rooftop, um, east facing, west facing, um, then you could connect each of those strings to the independent channels of the uh, of the inverter and you can have the advantage of um, independent maximum power tracking for each of those uh, two strings. The string inverters typically have uh, two stages internally, uh, a DC to DC stage and a DC to AC inverter stage and uh, they uh, the earlier designs all had a transformer isolation, many low frequency base and um, the more recent one uh, high frequency transformer in the DC DC stage. Um, but the emerging trend that I mentioned in the early part of the video is uh, is the move towards a transformer less arrangement um, and um, the um, the NEC codes and inter interconnection standards of many utilities are beginning to accept uh, the transformerless um, uh, solutions, provided they have additional um, um, protection in terms of um, ground fault detection and so on. The concept of micro inverter has been gaining a uh, lot of traction in the last couple of years or so. So the concept is to have uh, one inverter per PV module and the inverter is mounted right at the back of the, the module itself. And in some cases, it is actually integrated into the module during the design of the module itself. And, and this is sometimes called as the, the ACPB module. Um, since they are attached to the, uh, to the module, they, the rating corresponds to the rating of the module itself. And it's typically in the 250 to 300 watts range. Um, and one of the key advantage of uh, microinverter is that they only need AC wiring and they are connected in a DC chain fashion to the um, to the AC grid. Uh, the elimination of DC wiring and DC circuit breakers is a, is a main advantage. Uh, another key advantage that is often promoted in microinverters uh, is the module level uh, uh, MPPT. So even if uh, um, some of the modules are shaded, the remaining modules are not at all, not at all affected. Uh, unlike in a string inverter where the weakest um, uh, link in the string decides the, the series current and therefore there is a disproportionate loss in the total uh, energy harvested. Um, the micro inverters also uh, offer uh, a, a great level of uh, flexibility. Uh, it enables modular system design. Um, if you want to um, increase, uh, if you want to scale up the the ratings of the PV system, all you have to do is uh, just add another uh, module uh, with the uh, micro inverter integrated, whereas it is not so easy to do that uh, in, a, in a string inverter design. Um, I already mentioned the elimination of, elimination of the DC wiring is a main advantage. The drawbacks of the mic micro inverter include uh, the cost, they do not scale up cost effectively. Um, they also tend to be uh, tend to have uh, slightly lower efficiency. Uh, these are in the 95% CEC efficiency versus 97 in uh, string and 98 for um, for central inverters. Um, and also the uh, since uh, the micro inverters need to be mounted on the PV module itself, they are subjected to the same harsh environments that the PV modules are uh, placed in. High, high temperatures, uh, large uh, temperature cycling, uh, moisture, and so on. Uh, and also, if the uh, micro inverters do fail, since they are uh, placed very often on the rooftop, it is also fairly difficult to uh, service service them.